Hello, very good morning. Today, 22nd September 2020, a day is being celebrated as the World Rhino Day throughout the world. There are five species of rhinos, out of which in Asia we have three species of rhinos. Out of the three species, two species are critically endangered and these two critically endangered Asian rhino species are the Javan rhino and the Sumatran rhino. Both these species are now currently restricted in Indonesia. While the third species of rhino, the greater one horn, is basically found in India and Nepal. I am very fortunate to work on these three species of Asian rhinos as my capacity as the chair of the Asian Rhino Specialist Group for over 10 years. I have been engaged with the research and conservation of Greater Wanhorn Rhinos in Assam, which is a province located in northeastern part of India for over two decades. I work with an Assam-based non-government organization called Aranak, and I was founder, one of the founders of Aranak in 1989. Our approach towards conservation is, com is to complement the efforts being taken by the government agencies in Assam and in other provinces in India like West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh to secure the future of the Greater One Horn Rhino in Indian context. In fact, for Assam, the Greater One Horn Rhino is a species that every Assamese people are proud of because this is the state animal of province of Assam. And we owe shared responsibility along with the government agencies as a concerned citizen to assist conservation of rhinos in the wilderness. We have a long success story with regards to greater one horn rhinos in Assam. In 1905, it was thought that in Kaziranga area, there were probably about a dozen rhino left. Conservation measures initiated by the government by declaring Kaziranga as a reserve forest initially, followed by declaring Kaziranga as a game reserve in 1916. And finally, it was upgraded to a wildlife sanctuary and then, in 1974, Kaziranga was declared as a national park. So from a mere dozen rhinos thought to be in existence in 1905, by the end of 2020, we are in the month of September now, and as far as estimates carried out in Kaziranga National Park by the Kajiranga National Park authorities in 2018, we had 2,413 rhinos in Kajiranga National Park. Beside Kajiranga National Park in Assam, we also have about 101 rhinos in Orang National Park, about 102 rhinos in Povitra Wildlife Sanctuary, and in Manas National Park, we have over 40 rhinos. Close to Assam, there is another province called West Bengal, and they have two rhino bearing areas, namely Jallapara National Park, where they estimated, the government of West Bengal estimated about 230 rhinos. And in Gurumara National Park in West Bengal, the estimation of Greater One Horn Rhino is about 50. There is another province in India, along with the Nepal border called Uttar Pradesh, 
where in Dudua National Park there are about 38 to 40 rhinos. So India and in Nepal together the current population of greater one horn rhino is about 3600. Both the Indian and Nepalese government play proactive role over the years despite the challenges from poaching the rhino population in most of the rhino bearing sites are found increasing and that is one of the reason why in, in the year 2008 the IUCN red list of threatened animals has downlisted the greater one horn rhino from endangered to vulnerable. This is indeed a success story. The success of conservation is not to put more and more species to higher category of threats like endangered or critically endangered. The success of conservation lies whether we are able to bring down the threat perspective from higher to lower, whether we have been able to downlist a species from critically endangered to endangered or endangered to vulnerable or so on. Rhino conservation is being regarded as the epitome of conservation movement in Assam. And every Assamese people, they are proud of it. Despite the conservation efforts, there are challenges. Fortunately, the government in India and Nepal are taking proactive steps, reviewing the protection mechanism from time to time, because this is a dynamic process. Threat perspective changes. And as such, a proactive thinking is very much essential. In Assam, the Assam government, which is a provincial government within India, the Assam government even amended the National Act called the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. The Assam government amended it in 2009, wherein the Assam government has increased the fine and the convict the, and the jail period of the culprits involved in rhino poaching cases in Assam. So if we see the punishment of killing a rhino in Assam and other parts of India, the punishment is more in Assam. So that also reverberates the commitment of the Assam government to secure the future of greater one on rhinos. Arainak has been working in Assam, especially on rhinos, for over two decades. Our approach is to support the forest department, especially the wildlife wing, which are responsible to conserve and protect the rhinos in rhino bearing areas of Assam. We are in constant touch with the forest officials to find out the gaps where we at an, as an NGO can complement the effort of the government. So through this discussion, we get to know which are the areas we can further assist the efforts of the government. And over the years, we have generated resources from our donors, well wishes to support the equipments needed for rhino conservations, for example, walkie talkies or the vehicles or, you know, the motorbikes, boats, etc., which can complement the effort and speed up the busy. Conservation awareness is another area which is a continuous process to engage communities, to engage students, the upcoming generations to shoulder 
the responsibility of shared conservation responsibilities to secure the future of the rhinos in the wild. It is challenging, but challenges brings opportunity. And our opportunities lies with strengthening the effort already being made by government agencies, forests, the police, other line departments, complementing each other to reduce the poaching trends. The poaching in past few years, the rhino poaching in past few years has been reduced compared to about 41 rhinos being killed by poachers in 2013. Last year in 2019, the rhino poaching figures came down to only three. Thanks to forest officers and the Sam police who has also given proactive backup support to protect rhinos, to prevent the crime against rhinos. Thanks also to the local communities around the rhino bearing areas of Sam, especially in Kaziranga, Orang National Park, Manas National Park and Pubitra Wildlife Sanctuary. Because without their cooperation and support, the rhino conservation wouldn't have been that much successful. So this is a combined team effort. Aranak is very fortunate to join hands with a new charity established in the United Kingdom, which is known as People for Nature and Peace. We have joined hands to assist conservation in India to secure the future of the Greater One Horn Rhinos. Aranak has been working in the field of rhino research and also, as I mentioned earlier, we are trying to assist the enforcement agencies with varieties of act, you know, programs that includes the legal orientations to forests, police and other line departments. We are also proactively assisting the rhino bearing areas by providing trained sniffer dogs to assist them in scene of crime investigations of rhino poaching and other related crimes related to wildlife. We are also working on the change of hesitations being taking place in rhino bearing areas because of natural processes and sometimes because of also biotic interferences. Our rhino bearing areas, especially the Kajiranga National Park and Pubitra Wildlife Sanctuaries are in the flood plains and annual floods hit these rhino bearing areas every year, sometimes at low intensity sometimes at moderate intensity and sometimes in a high intensity. But annual flood is important for the rhinos and its habitat because it energizes the grassland and wetland ecosystems. It takes out the water hyacinth from the national park during high flood and then it flows down. So in that way, naturally, this annual flood are also helpful. Although it does take away the life of some rhinos and other animals. But if we see in a wider perspective, the flood is a natural phenomenon. It has been there ever since 1950 and a big earthquake hit Assam. An annual flood in the rhino bearing areas is an annual phenomenon. And all the animals knows. And accordingly, they adapt to that challenging environment. So despite the flood problem, our rhino populations are still increasing. We feel bad whenever a few rhinos are drowned due to high flood. But we must also realize 
that generally this is a process called natural selection, survival of the fetus. Weaker animals generally are drowned during this annual flood. And thereby nature selects the best progeny to continue a journey to keep the healthy animals alive so that the progeny, the future of spring, we can expect healthy. Government of Assam is monitoring the whole situation. There are efforts to make highlands in the past. There are also plans to make more highlands in future. But as an ecologist, I have been in touch with the government to ensure that we make highlands in an area where it is ecologically suitable, keeping in mind the inflow and outflow of water so that we don't disturb the natural hydrology, which is very much essential to save or to keep the natural floodplain ecosystems keep going so that they can continue to support rhinos and other animals in years to come. As I mentioned, then this is a continuous process. Thinking has to be continuous for which we need support from all voices, both within the countries and across the world. Because rhino is a prehistoric animal. All the species of rhinos are conservation dependent, protection dependent. So whatever positive momentum we have received in rhino conservation or whatever successes we have achieved over the years, it needs its continuations. Complacency is not going to help. We need to further strengthen our effort, both protection, habitat management is another issues because a lot of invasive plant species are now taking over the grassland and wetlands areas in some of our rhino bearing areas in India and Nepal. So along with preventing poaching, habitat management is becoming very crucial for which wider support is very much essential. Fortunately, as I mentioned, the government of India and Nepal has been taking proactive steps the Indian government is now planning to showcase rhino by preparing different kind of standard operating procedures on different aspects of rhino conservation and management, which is the welcome steps. Nepal governments too, in past few years were successful in checking rhino poaching in the countries. So on this occasion of World Rhino Day, I would like to request all the viewers to please share your love and affection for the rhinos, their habitats, the people, especially the frontline forest staff who are working day and night with limited facilities in the National Parks and Wildlife Sanctuaries. They are the pillars of conservation success of rhinos everywhere in India and Nepal. Police also playing a very important role, which also needs to be acknowledged. So with all this concerted effort, a team effort, that needs to be further strengthened. And that would ensure that we can further, perhaps, be able to downlist the threat categories of the greater one on rhinos and we will ensure together with your support with the proactive leadership being taken by the government agencies i'm hopeful that we'll be able to secure rhinos for our future generation thank you very much for listening to me i look forward to your continued support thank you very much